Hello once again, I am back. I was kind of thinking that, you know, one of the things that we need to learn how to do um, very good, I would say, in order to be able to use all that custom data ref and command stuff is you need to be able to use the data ref tool. And I think I remember from the last video that I made about how to find the custom commands or data refs, it's been a long time. And I think that the new version of the data ref tool is also so much better than the previous one that I had used in that other video. So I thought it was a good idea to just go ahead and make a new video with the new version of the data ref tool. So that's what we're gonna do today first. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into um, X-Plane here. And we're gonna basically uh, use my uh, Cessna 172 from Airfoil Labs, which is, I don't really fly it right now anymore because I'm flying the Mooney more. And I'm also flying the twin engine uh, uh, what is it the twin Comanche because I'm trying to get ready to take the p3 uh, with that star So I want to get some multi-engine, you know practice um, I haven't really been flying at all in the last you know four months or so But I'm trying to slowly get back into everything that I was doing before so We're gonna go ahead and jump inside here and there are certain things in here that I want to um, assign because I already know that they don't work um, so First things first, in order to use the, the data ref tool, you know, you need to go to this website here. Um, basically, if you do a Google search for uh, data ref tool download, um, and upon the many results that you'll get, one of them will be inside the explain.org. Um, but you can also go directly to the one on GitHub. So you basically click on this link right here. Let me get myself out of the picture here real quick so that I don't block anything. So you go to the download it here and then it's going to take you to the to the github page where it's at so this is the latest release of july 14th 2021 um, and if you go down here to the bottom unless you're a linux genius or somebody who likes to do the you know the your own compiling or whatever you can get the source code but if you're just like me you just want to get the the zip file that uh, you know that comes you know, so when you download it, you're going to get a zip folder, obviously. And if I, I already did this, so I'm not going to download it again. But, you know, when you download it, obviously, it's going to be um, this zip right here. And you're going to extract it, just like everything else. And you're going to get uh, this folder. And it's going to have two versions in it. I already moved the other one out. So it's going to be Data Ref 2 for x 10 and then also for x 11. I already moved the one for X-Plane 11 over to my plugins folder. So what you would do is you would just move this folder over to your plugins folder in the X-Plane. And you're going to basically have a folder called a data ref tool. I renamed mine. So I took off the, the version number and everything. But this is where it's at. And that's how you do it. Inside there all you're going to have is this uh, 64 folder. Um, and that's all you're gonna get in there. Well, there's nothing in there. I'm kind of am amazed that it works But anyways, um, so that's what you need to do first of all Once you have the data ref tool in your plugins folder You'll be able to get to the menu right here and the only thing you need to do is uh, Go to search and you're gonna get this little window here, and I really like this one more because uh, You can actually uh, make it bigger both directions and there's a lot of features about this tool that I really like and then not only that but they also made it not um, see-through anymore so before it was really hard like if you had the data ref tool let's say over a certain part of the airplane where it was bright you couldn't really see the letters and with this one you could see it a lot more so I really really like this one here alright so first things first I'm gonna show you a little bit here the the layout of the tool so the search bar right here you can uh, search for multiple search terms separated by a space um, so if you wanted to look for something you know that or multiple things at once you can do that but for me I think it's already confusing enough just to search for one term so I've only ever used it with one term but if you did want to search for multiple terms at once you can use them separated by a space um, this little thing right here says irregular or regular expressions uh, to tell you the truth, I don't even know exactly what that means, so I'm not going to get any further. I looked, I read the instructions and everything for it, but I couldn't find any more explanation of what that does. 
um, this one right here is uh, the case sensitive so in case you want to look for if you want to just use something that's a capital letters uh, you would activate this one here so that it only finds uh, whatever you typed up here in the in the lowercase or uppercase uh, letters and that's what that would filter out this one here the CH it's for changes so when you click on that you'll see right now when I'm doing it, it it'll clear out the whole entire list and only data refs that or commands that change will show up so if you press a button only the command or data ref that was activated when you push that button will show up in the list and then this one changes between data refs and commands or only data refs or only commands so you can narrow down the list that way too um, up here you see the total number of data refs that are loaded so as you start typing letters here you know you'll see the numbers start coming down coming down because it's narrowing the search so that's really handy too that once you once you put a search term in here you're not going to have thousands and thousands of data refs to go through you're only going to have some now Another cool thing that I really like about this one here is that you can actually copy the name of the command or data ref so you can paste it into, you know, like for example, the configurator or whatever you, or even if you want to put it into a text document before you were not able to do that. And another thing is this edit button. Once you have a certain data ref or command highlighted and you click edit, you can actually change the value of the data ref so if it's a uh, writable data ref, you can see the results that changing that value has inside the simulator. So this is a really cool uh, tool to have. All right, so like I said, the first one we're gonna do is uh, the autopilot uh, button right here. So right now you can see that with this airplane loaded, I have 9,433 data refs, which is a lot. You know, so if I wanted to put like just AP, you know, now it only shows 611, uh, but that's still a lot. So maybe I can just type autopilot and now it's, well, it's 6, 314. But remember what I told you that you can just um, isolate it to the ones that are changing. So if you click on that, you can clear it all the way. And then when I press the autopilot button, you see that you know whatever showed up here so here is the very top one right here 172 slash autopilot slash ap underscore ap that's the that's the one that actually gets um activated now if you want to know if that's a data ref or a command usually commands will not have any numbers over here but if you want to make sure you can just put commands only and then when you press it again you see it come up right there so that's the one you're gonna need to know now that's a simple one because it's just a, a little you know command that's it it has no values no nothing else associated so that's good so now we're gonna go ahead and go over to this side here let me see all right and we're gonna do the true airspeed um, little bug here so in order to do that, you know, we'll go ahead and delete that and we'll just put maybe TAS. Um, and right now, everything is clear, so we can move it. But you see, since I only have commands, it doesn't come up. So you can go ahead and put data refs and try it again. And you can see that the value is changing there, right? So there are two things you need to know about when you get a... a a data ref or something like this first of all you need to get the data ref itself the name of it and then you need to know what the values are what's the maximum and the minimum and you need to also know what the step is so when you when you move it you go to one extreme and you go to zero you see that and if you go to the other extreme it gets to 100 in this particular case uh, now when you move it one little click at a time you can see that it changes 0.25 each time you click once so that's what they call um, they call it the step or, or the index I think they call it the in data ref index in the configurator so those are all the notes you need to take 
in order to to figure that out okay so that's that's that one right there all right so now we're going to try to find what the function or the data ref or command for this is right here so right now we don't have any search terms in there at all so basically you know we can move it and we don't we can just check to see if anything is moving uh, you know so we can figure it out um, but you have to go through this entire list you know that which is 6700 data refs right here um, so we don't want to really do that so I'm gonna type um, artificial horizon and then just put that I want to see the ones that are changing so if I move it that's actually not showing up okay well this one is very interesting because you see that that does say AH but I didn't have the the capital the, the the case so it wasn't showing up but now it is but I'm telling you some of these things are very hard to find so you just have to you know guess and take different chances um so obviously you can see that uh, if we move it all the way to one extreme it goes to negative one and then if I go all the way up to the other extreme which is at the top it takes a while it gets to one so the range for this one is gonna be negative one to one and then every time you push it is changing by 0 0.01 you see that was 0 0.99 and then 0 0.98 0 0.97 so you your step is going to be 0 0.01 so that's one of the things you need to know then so that's how we found that one the next one we're going to do is the alternate static air valve so we're going to go ahead and clear all of this and we're just let's try to type um alt for alternate and then we're going to go down here uh, let me see so we can move the static air valve but right now we only have data refs so it's not coming up with data refs so we can try commands and it's not showing up there either so let's try with 172 uh, let's see if that shows up nothing showing up there that's a lot of them right there so I don't know if we do the star get rid of that okay it's not sh oh it's actually a data ref it's not a command so let's do that so if I switch it let's let's change it back to that okay okay so I think it's this one right here the actuators static air but there's two of them so sometimes you need to figure out which one it is you see when I open it up is is both of them are zero and then when you close it both of them are one so it could be either one of these but sometimes you just need to try one and if it doesn't work then you try the other one um, on this particular airplane I believe a lot of the things do have a V after them so I'm gonna I already have my notes and it is the one with a V so I already know that but if I didn't know that I would probably try one of them and if that didn't work then I would try the other one so anyways so that's that one the next one we're gonna try is the engine mixture so for this one let's say we want to try mix and let's see if we change it there's the mixture right there so uh, this is the only one that's particular to this airplane so you can see that is 172 slash engine slash mixture underscore ratio underscore zero and obviously if you push it all the way in it goes to one and if you push it all the way out I bet you it goes to zero but I don't want to push it all the way out because then I'm gonna kill the engine um, but we need to find out if there's a, a step sometimes you don't need the step but sometimes you do but in this particular case uh, no I don't think we're gonna use a step it's it's very very variable so I'm just not even gonna mess with a step but at least we know that this is the data ref that we need so that's what you would write 
and you will write your maximum and minimum values which is 0 to 1 okay and the last thing we're gonna use is the fuel tank selector so I guess let me see we can probably use the word fuel in order to do that one and so let's see if we switch over to the left tank oops there we go so you can see that it was 172 uh, slash com underscore fuel underscore tank underscore left and that is a command I believe let me see okay yeah so that goes to the right and that goes to the right again so these are two commands but at the same time let me see there is a uh, 172 slash panel actuator slash fuel tank select and you see that when it's on the left tank it's negative one and then when it's on if I can change it <laughs> okay there we go when it's in the both is zero and when it's on the right is one so you have negative one zero and one so you can try both of these with this because it might be it might be the the data ref or it might be the commands up here and you can see that it also changes this standard explain uh, command right here or a data ref but and, and the numbers do change right there too but when you select the normal uh, configuration configuration command for a fuel tank selector it doesn't do anything in this particular airplane all right so that's pretty much how you find you know your custom commands or data refs so the reason I wanted to do you know this variety of, of uh, commands and data refs is because each one of them is a little bit different and although like I said before I had already done it on a previous video uh, about using the data ref tool to find these things um, I think it's a good exercise just to show it with a new one here that that I have uh, the, the new version of it you know so this is gonna be the foundation for if you want to use any sort of custom commands or data refs to make your own custom keywords uh, which is the part that I was planning to do the, the next video on but it's not working so instead what I'm gonna do right now I'm going to basically just uh, show you how to assign the standard you know configurator um, parameters or keywords for all of these different uh, buttons and switches and encoders and show you that with this particular airplane they're not working and then we're gonna go and assign them the actual custom data reps and commands to make each one of these things work with the airfoil app Cessna 172 so that's my plan for now uh, so hopefully I can start working on that one um, pretty soon after this and then I will upload it as soon as it's ready alright well thank you guys very much again for watching and hope it was worth the wait <laughs> the four month wait for me to start making videos again and uh, yeah so we'll see you on the next one thanks